Welcome back to part two of our Living Ready series. Once again, this is a four-part series taking a look at Matthew chapter 24, specifically the need to understand that in the times that we're living in, and we should be saying that in all times that we're living in, it's not that we need to be ready. We need to live ready. I hope that you noticed that in our last part, how much that was stressed. I encourage you to go back, but even more than that, as we're continuing on through this series, make sure that you're reading through Matthew 24 every time before we go through each part of this series. Today we'll be in Matthew chapter 24, looking at verses 15 through 27. Before we begin, let's begin with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you have given us in your word. We ask right now that as we study, that you would guide us into fuller understanding, into the truth as it is in Jesus. Show us what you have for us and how you want to apply it in this time and in this way. This is our prayers. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Whether we'd like to admit it or not, all of us are part of that group. Now, I'm sure that some of you are going, whoa, 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 hold on just a second. What group are you talking about? I'm talking about the what if group. Whether we like it or not, all of us have gone into that area and gone, what if or maybe have you ever thought of? Maybe that's what we should look at instead, not the what if. Have you ever thought of? what if? Now, let's throw out that question. Have you ever thought of why it is that God gives us the prophecies that he does? Now, that seems kind of a, a strange question to ask, but it's an important question that we're asking it in the here and now, because whether we like it or not, this is a very simple answer. God gives us information and enough information for us to know and to see the times so that we're discerning what's going on. But not just that. God wants us to know and understand that he will never leave us without. He's always going to give us information so that we know what's going on in the times that we're living in. Now that's how much God loves us. When God shows us this love. He wants us to take this information, not to hide it to ourselves, not to keep it to ourselves, I should say, but to share this with other people. Saying, you know, it's not a time to panic. It's not a time to go and collect all this crazy stuff. But it is time to make sure that we are secure in our relationship with God, our relationship with Jesus. If we are not founded fully in Jesus here and now, there's no hope for us in the end. Literally, it's the end of the end of the end of the end is going to be like a riptide in the ocean where it's going to suck us out so fast because we don't have our solid our feet solidly planted on anything that's not going to go out from under us. The way that this happens I'm not talking about the riptide. I'm talking about having our feet on solid ground. The way that this happens is by finding ourselves in Jesus. The only way that we will find ourselves in Jesus is by knowing him personally, by spending time with him, by spending time in his word. And like we mentioned yesterday, or I should say in part one, spending time with his people. God has given us such an immense family of faith for us to bond together, to learn of each other in how God is working in the relationships with other people. Now, it's, it's sad to say that just like any other family, you're going to have people that are in the family that are going to try to tear us down, and that's normal. I honestly wish, I so wish that I could tell you that this would not happen. But we're told that this is going to happen. But take courage. God is the one in control. 
and he's going to keep the balance. He's going to see us through because of what he's promised. Now let's get into our text for today. I hope that you have your Bibles right beside you. It's just important for us to be looking at these texts as we are studying through these passages. Once again, Matthew chapter 24. We're going to be looking at verses 15 through 27. And verse 15 starts out by saying this. Jesus is still speaking in this, these concepts. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, and specifically Matthew interjects this, let the reader understand, then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Interesting text, isn't it? And right here, I encourage you, go back, take a look at the book of Daniel. Read it in its context, because all 12 chapters build on it on themselves. And what you need to understand in one chapter is going to be found in another. And if you are having a hard time understanding that, I encourage you, go and take a look at Revelation, but also take a look at the book of John. These concepts build on each other to give us a fuller understanding. Right here, Jesus was talking about when the Romans come and destroy Israel fully. Or if you remember in our last session together, we've, we've mentioned that this happened in AD 70. Now this was when the temple was torn down. And what's interesting about this history is that there were, were rumors going around in this time that there were, was actually gold in the temple. And I'm talking about solid gold that was plating the walls in between the bricks, everything. And so this is why the Romans tore down the temple. But specifically, we see in this, when the Romans come in, they make sacrifices to their gods in the temple itself. And Jesus tells the followers of the way, these early Christian followers, when you see these things happening, when you know that this time is, is right, you got to leave. Don't pick anything up. Don't go after anything. Run as fast as you can. Now, the day is going to come where we're going to be faced with a similar situation. Where right now God is saying, hey, you are in a time of peace, but that time is not going to last very long. There is going to come a day where all chaos is going to erupt, where you're going to have to leave your very dwelling. You're going to have to run for the mountains, run for the hills, run for the wilderness. But know this, that when you go, I will be with you. I'm going to take care of you. That promise that we see from Jesus is throughout the pages of the Bible. It's not a what if or have you ever thought. It is a reality. When Jesus speaks, reality happens. We have nothing to worry about lest we forget about how he's doing things in the here and now. Honestly, let's never forget what he's doing. It's not worth forgetting. It's not worth pushing it aside because of what he's doing right now. But things are going to get worse. Hey, we could never imagine how worse they, that they could get. But I will say this, because of all the technology that we have, because of social media, things are so in our face now than, more than ever before that it is making people breakdown on a different mental level than has never been seen. Now, there are sometimes I wonder if this is what the prophets were talking about, that they saw this and the way that they wrote it was the best way that they could describe it. Which I don't know about you, but that's one of the things I want to ask them in eternity. And, you know, I may not even remember this when we get to eternity. But to understand what they saw and why they put it into the words that they did. But even more than that, we need to remember that as we're looking 
at how they wrote it, the context of their words translated into our modern day vernacular, our modern day language is night and day different. There are a lot of things that literally are not able to be translated anymore because the context in the situation of those words just doesn't exist anymore. But at the same time, we need to remember, even in English, we're still having that problem. We need to remember that words change, people change, times change. But even though these things change, the good news is this. God does not change. Jesus is still the same now and forevermore. That right there is amazing news. Verse 17 it continues on with, with this concept. Whoever is on the housetop must not go down to get the things out, out that are in his house. Whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. But pray that your flight will not be in the winter or on a Sabbath. Now, we referred to the fact that things are going to be so intense that you can't go back. But there are groups that Jesus specifically mentions saying, you know, it's going to be hard for them. It's already hard for them now in the, with everything going on. But when this full persecution comes like a storm that seems to have never been before, it is going to be extremely difficult for everybody. But then Jesus throws out another thing. Pray that we do not have to run in the winter. A time where it seems that no matter where you go, it's going to be hard to stay alive. You know, if we're not sure about how that works, go to an inner city during the winters and look at the homeless population. They struggle to survive. Somehow they still do survive. But often, and I hate to say this, it's nothing to do with what we even try to do. Too often we're focused so much on ourselves that we don't even think that they exist. Actually, we know that they don't exist because there's nothing outside of our circle that could be that bad. And as Christians, as followers of the way, we really need to re-examine everything that's going on. And we need to ask ourselves, why aren't we taking the chance? Why aren't we taking the opportunity to actually reach out, to actually help these people? Usually the answer that we'll come across is as a church family, dare I even say this, we don't like people. If we bring more people in, we're going to have to change. And we don't like that. Now, that's really sad that we, we've gotten to that point. This building, this body, is a group that has been set apart to help with others' healing. Now, we're still healing ourselves, but we're call, we are called to call others to the full healing that is in Jesus. He doesn't just give it to us alone. He gives it to all that want it. But he also throws out this. Pray that your flight is not on Sabbath. You know, as we look at the Bible, the Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. That not only is the memorial of what God has done with creation, it's the remembrance of who God is himself. And he gave us that so that we could rest from everything else and that we could spend time alone with him. But not just alone with him, spending time together with him. And that's what we're going to be doing throughout the ages of eternity. Which that, That's amazing thinking about that right there. He doesn't want anything to conflict with our time with worshiping with him. That's why Jesus throws us out. Sabbath is an important day. The more time goes on, the more important it's, it has begun, become for the simple reason 
that things have gotten so stressful that we need that time. We need that time aside to be able to rest. We need that time aside to be able to spend with him. We need that time aside to be able to spend with each other. But we don't want to have conflicts when it comes to the time that we need to run. And Jesus said that for when the destruction of Jerusalem was going to happen. Jesus gave them the information that they needed at that moment so that they would be ready for when it happens. Right here, verse 21, he continues on with saying this, For then there will be a great tribulation such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. Now, right there, you know, we can speculate all we want, but really we don't know what this is going to be like. Now we can say, well, you know, we, we know from the dark ages, this and this and this and this. That's a lot of speculation. We can say that it will be like that, but we can't say that it will be like that. And we're even told that even from the prophets of old, what they saw and what they wrote, that may not be how they wrote it. I'm not saying that what they wrote is wrong, but how they put it into the pen with their own words is going to be different than any mind can ever imagine. But there is going to come a time that is going to be so troublesome that if we are not solidly in Jesus, we will not be able to stand. You know, someone just someone once told me many years ago, eternity does not start at the end of this world's history. Eternity starts now. If we are not found in Jesus moment by moment by moment, we will not be saved. And that's what eternity is. It's being safe to save being in Jesus forever, so that we will be with him and each other forever and ever and ever. That's my prayer for all of us, that we will continually be found in him so that we're ready to live together with him forever. But Jesus continues on, unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved, but for the sake of of the elect, those days will be cut short. Now, for Jesus to say this, that means that these times are going to be so terrible that it could end everything on this world. Now, just looking at everything that's going on right now, it seems that that's the verge that we're on right now, isn't it? But Jesus reminds us of this fact. I'm in control. Don't worry. I have everything under control. When Jesus says those words, if you remember us mentioning this many times before, it's not just a possibility. This is a reality because he said it himself. He continues on in verse 23 by saying this, Then if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe him. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Now, a couple things that we need to point out once again right here. It mentions that people will come in his name saying that they are Jesus or even more, they are one of his prophets. Don't believe it. God has a specific way that he does things. Jesus will come the second time in the clouds. But even more with the prophets, you will know them by what they speak. If it's not of him, they are not of him. But there's an interesting thing in that last text that we just read where it says this, if it was possible, even the very elect would be deceived. You know, the sad thing is there's a lot of people going around these days saying that it is possible to, see, to deceive the elect. Now, I actually take this a different way, and 
for those of you that may feel that I'm step, stepping on your toes, I'm not trying to step on your toes or change your theology, but I want, I want you to think of it, as, it this way. When we are so founded in Jesus, there's no way that we're going to be shaken. When you're in Jesus, you can never be taken away unless you decide to be taken away. So the very language itself, when talking about this text, refers to the concept as this. While we think of the what if, and that's what it would be, what if, there is no possibility because the people that are following the Lamb continually will not be swayed. That's why we have to know Jesus now. If we're waiting until the very end of the 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 end, we're going to be swept away. If you're not found in this moment and moment by moment by moment, you will not be saved. It's only by having the relationship starting now that we're going to be saved. I can't say it enough. If we are not seeking that now, there is no future. There is no tomorrow. There is no next second. We're promised the here and now. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. If we're not preparing now, we're not going to be ready then. Find yourself in him so that when this does happen, we can see with this, verse, verse 25, where Jesus is continuing on. Behold, I have told you in advance. Jesus gives us this warning in advance so that we know in the here and now and we're ready then. Jesus doesn't want, to be, want us to be left without. He wants us to be continually ready, to continually be in him so that we are found forever with him. The last two verses of our time together in, in this session, verses 26 and 27. So if they say to you, behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Or behold, he is in the inner room, do not believe them. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. When Jesus comes... The reality is this, that everyone will see him at the same time. We're all going to experience the second coming. It's not that he pops up here, pops up there, pops up wherever, or even that there's the secret rapture that takes all the good people to heaven seven years before the second coming. No, the Bible teaches specifically that before the thousand years is when the second coming is. And that when Jesus comes, all that are alive will be taken up in the clouds. But before they're taken up, all the righteous dead are raised again. They're brought up and then we're brought up. And then we spend a thousand years in heaven with Jesus, un trying to understand what happened in this world's history. And that's where at the end of the thousand years, he comes back for the last time. A final judgment is pronounced upon the wicked, upon Satan, upon his angels. Everything that is evil, justice is pronounced. And then once that's done, Jesus will recreate this pocket of the universe. And it will be forever different. Not only will it be forever different, this is where God's headquarters will ultimately be. Now, that's an amazing thing, isn't it? But the only way to be with him in eternity is by preparing now. The way that we prepare is by spending time with him. Prayer is a continual conversation as between best friends. Jesus is not just our creator. He's not just our redeemer. He's not just our savior. He ultimately is our best friend. He's a better friend that we could ever imagine, ever think of, ever want for. But even more than that, he's a friend that will never change. And that is something 
that you can continually bank on. That's something that we can take both in the here and now and throughout the ages of eternity. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for that fact that you are our best friend, that you're calling us to something greater, that you're seeking to have a more intimate relationship than we can ever imagine. Father, guide us as we continue to seek your face, as we continue to seek to know your will. Bless us as we continue to study your word. Bring us back yet again for our third part in a series, ready to continue to tackle, ready to continue to study, ready to continue to seek your face. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in part three as we continue to study God's word together. God bless.